Welcome to this video on Windows Server 2012 Dynamic Core. Uh, my name is John Savile. I just want to quickly review what are the big changes in the core model in Windows Server 2012 and really why was it needed. If we look back historically at clusters, let's just take Windows Server 2008 R2, Quorum is very, very important. The idea of Quorum in a cluster is suppose I have multiple boxes. So I have node A, node B, node C, and node D. And suppose they are physically separated, different locations, network connecting them. Now the challenge with a cluster is suppose there's some breaking communication. They can no longer communicate. Well, you don't want both halves of the cluster, so these are separate partitions now, offering the same services at the same time. You'll get corruption, you don't exactly know what's going to happen. So Quorum says, well, only one part of the cluster can make Quorum to actually be allowed to offer services. So the way Quorum works is a number of different models. So for example, you can say, well, each box has one vote. And in order to make quorum, you must have more than 50% of the number of votes. So here there's one, two, three, four votes. So to make quorum, you need greater than two. Well, the challenge in this situation is each half has two votes exactly, not more than two. So neither half would be able to make quorum, so the cluster would just shut down on both sides. Now, if I had an odd number of votes, suppose I had three nodes on this side, so now there's five votes in total. So this has three votes. If there was a break in communication, this side has greater than, in this case, two and a half. It can make quorum. It has more than 50%. So even if you had a break in communication, this side carries on functioning. And this is one model of quorum. If I have an odd number of hosts, so three, five, seven, nine, whatever, I can just use node majority. Each node has one vote, and as long as I have more than half the number of votes, I get quorum and I can offer services. But suppose I don't have that. Suppose I'm back to the idea of I have an even number of nodes. Well now, I can't make quorum. So we add a witness in. So witness could be a disk witness. So if there is some concept of shared storage, so they all connect into some storage. I have a disk witness, and that disk witness also has a vote. So now, I need, there's five votes in total, I need greater than two and a half, essentially. Well, this counts. So if there was a break in communication, only one side of the cluster would lock, the, there's a special file on this disk, would lock that disk, and that would count in their quorum calculation. So suppose this was here, this size has three votes, this one only has two, so therefore this one would shut down, and this side runs quite happily. So that's great. If you don't have shared storage, you can use a file share. So it's just a file share, and again, this gets a vote, so this has disappeared, and again, it will be locked by one partition of the cluster. So you have these different models in 2008 R2, and they still remain in 2012. And this assures that in some kind of break, one partition can always make quorum. But there's a challenge here. So let's take this out. Let's go back to our original four nodes. So I need, essentially at this point, three nodes, if there's no disk witness or file share witness, to stay functional. Now let's say I'm doing some maintenance. I shut down this box. I'm going to patch it, reboot it, hardware maintenance, doesn't matter. So I'm going to shut this down. Well, as soon as I shut this down, remember it still has a vote. So in total there are four votes. One, two, three, four. He is now not available. So there are now three votes left. Well, that's greater than 50% of the cluster stays up. But now suppose I get a bit anxious, I, I now go and patch a second box. Maybe this box crashes. Well now this vote has gone as well. Now I have two votes. Two is not greater than 
And what would happen now is the entire cluster would shut down. I don't have quorum. These two nodes out of the four do not make quorum. Now, if I had a file share witness, a disk witness with its own vote, that would be fine. I'd have three votes out of five, I would carry on. But in this case, I don't. So what dynamic quorum does is very clever. What dynamic quorum says is in a planned scenario, so I'm gonna shut this box down for maintenance, and there were four votes. As I shut this box down, as I put it into maintenance mode, as I do a clean shutdown, I'm patching it, whatever, it actually loses its vote. So now there aren't four votes, there's three votes. So there's three votes out of three remain. It's dynamically changing the quorum of the cluster. Now let's say I, I'm anxious again. I shut down this box. Its vote changes to zero. So now I'm left with two votes. So I still have two out of two. I have more than 50%. So as you can see now, I can actually survive really any amount of planned downtime. I'm not gonna lose quorum because it's taking their vote away as it shuts them down. Now as they come back up, it gets its vote back. So this is completed its reboot, its patch, whatever. Now it would get its vote, it'd be one again. And then that would get another one, so back to three, then four. It's dynamically changing as I'm bringing them in and out of maintenance, as I'm patching them, whatever. And something special does happen with dynamic quorum when I get to two boxes left. Because at this point, well, how exactly do I want to handle if one box just crashed, for example? I would like to try and survive now a box failure. Because right now I wouldn't. If one box went down, the whole cluster would just shut down. So what dynamic quorum actually does, when you only have two nodes left, there's no disk witness, there's no file share witness. It says, okay, there's only two votes left on two nodes. It randomly picks one, and one of them keeps its vote, the other loses its vote. Now, why is that a good thing? Well, now, it gives us a 50-50 chance of surviving a node failure. If this box now just crashed, so in an unplanned scenario, well, this box has the vote, and it would, carry on running, it will carry on functioning. There's only one vote, it has that one vote, it's more than 50% of the votes. So it would survive this box crashing. Now if this box crashed, this box has no votes, it would just shut down. If I shut down this box cleanly with the one vote, that vote would transfer over, so this box would now have one vote, this would go to zero, it would shut down, the cluster would stay running. As I bring it back up, it will get the vote, etc., etc. So this is what dynamic quorum is. Dynamic quorum is saying, well, look, as I plan to shut down boxes, they're going to lose their vote. So that it comes out of that quorum calculation. So if I had a 16 node cluster, I could shut down 12 nodes in a planned scenario, and the cluster will keep running because those boxes are taken out of the quorum calculation. Now, unplanned, this doesn't happen. If this box crashed, its vote still counts, because I want clustering to take that into account. But in a planned maintenance, it takes the votes away. Now one challenge you do have when you start getting into these situations of two boxes left or an even number of nodes, well generally you want to add a disk witness or a file share witness, only when you have an even number of nodes. When I have an odd number of nodes, I don't want that extra disk or file share witness. So it can get a little bit tricky about those. The great news is in R2, 2012 R2, you always add a disk witness or a file share witness, and it uses it only if it needs it. Only if there is an even number of nodes does it use that disk or file share witness. If there's an odd number of nodes, it doesn't use the witness vote. So it gets better in 2012 R2, it dynamically uses that witness when it needs to. So there's no node majority or node and file share or node and disk model in 2012 R2. It's just you add a witness always, and it decides if it should use it or not. So it gets a lot, lot better. But hopefully this uh, clears up what is dynamic quorum. It's just adding and removing votes as you take boxes in and out of maintenance. So appreciate your time. Thank you.